Hi. We're going to now look in the appendicular skeleton, the upper extremity. Just like the lower extremity, there are, uh, we have girdles, like a pelvic girdle with the lower limb. Well, here we have what's known as a pectoral girdle and an upper limb. Now some have maybe seen a shoulder blade, a collarbone, and here they are. This is clavicle bone, scapula bone, this is a right side, features to contrast, right and left, scapula, notice the Posterior view, as you're seeing right there, I'm holding on the inferior angle of each right and left scapula. And notice the articulating surface where I'm touching right here. This is where the humerus is going to articulate the head of the humerus into this region. This happens to be the glenoid cavity. And that would be glenoid cavity of the scapula bone. And notice this is lateral on the lateral side of this bone. These point down, so this is inferior. And because scapula, it has a scalloped shape to it like a skip. And this would be riding on the surface of the thoracic cage. Like when you shrug your shoulders up and down. Let's look at the clavicle for a moment. The clavicle Sometimes it is a little tricky to know left and right. But if we look closely, one end in the medial is a lot larger than the other end. It's a lot flatter. So we can see both ends here are flat. They also kind of have a an S type of a curve to them. So let's focus on the right side. We're going to look towards the point of the shoulder. If you just take your hand like this and you feel a knot of bone at the top. We call this the acromion, which means point of the shoulder. The acromion means point of the shoulder. This is the acromiole end of the clavicle bone. And notice how it slopes to the forward position. It slopes to the anterior. So I think of my hands off to the edge and moving, sweeping forward. Sternal end, if you can think of your fists as the sternal end, Place, find your manubrium, that's part of your sternum. Place your two sternal ends of your clavicles right here, and it creates a little notch. You can feel that right here. The sternal end is medial. Out to the side, it sweeps forward and flat the acromial end. 
well, how would I distinguish right and left? If I can place it over here, it looks like it's a mirrored image. But on inspection, the top surface is smooth, just like your shoulder, smooth and flat. And underneath, you can feel rough and bumpy. So it's smooth and flat and bumpy underneath. And that's an easy way to say what goes up and down in its orientation. It's smooth on top, bumpy underneath, sternal end, acromial end. And you should be able to figure out by in close inspection, sweeping forward, what is right and left. already showed you the scapula, the spine, there's the body of the scapula, and the spine comes off the posterior aspect, and it comes up, slopes up and away to the, up around the shoulders. Just like you were to reach around two people and put your hands around two taller people, your arms would sweep up and around on either side, just like this, to the acromion. So you can figure out with this right and left scapula bones. The humerus bone, it's a long bone, it has a round head, not as dramatic as the femur, but it is a head for a ball and socket. It articulates in the glenoid cavity, sometimes referred to as the glenohumeral joint. Now to distinguish right and left on this bone, you would look for this nice thumb depression. This is on the distal end, that means the lower part from anatomical position. The head is superior medial, and there's the posterior lard, looks like someone pressed your thumb. It's an O shape. Say olecranon. That's the olecranon fossa. That is in the posterior. So just seeing this, you think this is in the back of the bone. The head is medial to the body, so this must be a right side. There is an articulation at the elbow joint. with two forearm bones. The arm is known as the brachium, the forearm is known as antebrachium, the forearm before the arm. There's a medial, I gotta use my hands like this, there's a medial and a lateral bone. The lateral bone that crosses over when we pronate and supinate our forearm. This is the radius bone. Like you're going to draw the radius of a circle. Take your finger, put it in the center, and with your thumb draw a circle. The distance between here is your radius of the circle radius. The radius in anatomical position, put my hands, is lateral. Another way I, in my mind, I think thumb side, lateral. My thumbs radiate laterally in anatomical position. So thumbs radiate, radius bone, laterally.
The medial bone that allows us to flex and extend our forearm is called the ulna bone. It has a unique shape. It looks kind of like an ice cream scooper. Like you can scoop something out. If you used to scoop it up, notice it has a U for ulna, or that's part of the up of the bone. So that's at the elbow joint. Distally, it has a small point, the styloid process. You can usually feel this on your own wrist or your pinky on the back of your wrist, right there, that bone that sticks out. That's the styloid process of the ulna. It is medial. To tell a right and left ulna, They, they, they look very similar. What you must look for is one small notch on the side here. This is where the radius articulates. This is where the head of the radius articulates right here because the ulna is medial, the radius is lateral. So that little mark right there is on the lateral side of the bone. And there's none on this side. That means that is the side that goes up against your body when you flex and extend this part of your arm, forearm. And the radius to tilt right and left is fairly simple. I have a right and a left radius and I'll show you. If you position your hand like this, like fist, put your thumbs together and point your thumbs out like this and then turn them over, back and forth, it actually makes the shape of the radius. See my thumb is the styloid process. They both have knuckle bumps and the palm side would be smooth. They match the side they're on. All you have to do is look at it and match. Does this look like this one matches? Or how about this side? You can see how it matches the side it's on. Wrist bones. We have eight carpal bones wrist bones. Contrast, in the ankle we have seven tarsal bones. That's your ankle bones. In the hand we have metacarpal bones. Fingers, these are phalanges. Individual segment phalanx. Here's an easy way to remember carpal bones and tarsal bones. Just remember when you're driving your car with wrist action, drive a car, carpal bones, wrist action, wrist bones. Stomp your feet, walk on tar, ankle bones, tarsal bones. This concludes your uh, overview. I know it's uh, very tedious. Go through, uh, look at this video many times. Develop your own study. Study as much as you can. I, I sure hope that these video presentations are helpful. And I wish you well. Study well.